you're a fan of digital trends live, you know that I love talking about artificial intelligence and robotics. I find it fascinating and there are so many amazing advancements that have happened over the last year. And we have our foremost expert, Mr. Luke Dormel on right now to talk about just that. Hello, Luke. Hello, hi, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, so you have an article that's up at Digital Trends right now, a really great article, uh, just talking about over this last year, some of the different advancements we've seen. I mean, AI has been a huge topic uh, that's, that's really been at, kind of at the forefront of a lot of different segments of technology, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it was difficult for this piece to really sort of narrow down um, a, a, a finite number of um, breakthroughs that we've seen in the last year in terms of exciting demonstrations of uh, sort of machine learning and robotics in action. But really, that was what the, the piece was designed to, to do. I mean, of course, it's difficult to be able to say what the most significant advances um, have been in the last year because we don't yet know how some of these technologies are going to play out. But certainly these were kind of maybe about eight of the most kind of attention grabbing uh, demonstrations that we've seen in both of these fields. Well, and you're absolutely right. I mean, it is hard. It's hard to narrow it down. And yeah, until we see where this technology goes, you know, you don't know what's going to have the biggest impact going forward. But one that uh, a company that I think we all see their videos, definitely probably the most viral worthy videos in all of robotics is a company, Boston Dynamics. And one of their advancements is really, really impressive and also kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. This is the video of Boston Dynamics uh, Atlas uh, robot, which you can see on the screen at the moment, which they've been working on for about five years now. And every year it seems that they demonstrate sort of multiple astonishing achievements with it. Last year, they, they had it executing a sort of picture perfect Olympics worthy backflip. And if you thought there was no way that it could possibly top that this year, it sort of demonstrated a, a, a pretty impressive parkour display that looked like something out of you know, one of the Jason Bourne films or, or, or Casino Royale or something. It was pretty impressive. And especially if you put that into the context of remembering that not that long ago, within our lifetimes, you know, robots were uh, machines that could maybe shuffle down a hallway without falling over. So it's pretty astonishing that you, you can have a, a, a demonstration like this. You know, this isn't technology yet that is rolling out in the real world, maybe uh, maybe we're kind of glad about that, but it's a pretty <laughs> astonishing demonstration of just what some of this technology is uh, capable of from one of the world's most exciting robotics labs. Uh, that's And that's a good point. I mean, it does, the video looks like it's CGI, it's not. I mean, this is really something they've created. What kind of an application could that product have in, in the, if it were to come out into the marketplace? Yeah, I mean, there are a tremendous number of uh, potential applications. You've got to remember, of course, that a lot of this research doesn't necessarily, the robot that is then kind of, you know, I guess, developed as a result of this doesn't have to look like the robot that we're watching in the video. A lot of this is about testing out new forms of locomotion sort of working out what works, what doesn't work, uh, sort of robot agility, maybe kind of autonomous sensing. I, I mean, you can clearly see something like this having a military application potentially, but at the same time, there are other robots that I mentioned on the list. That's maybe the attention grabbing one, but there are other um, robots I include on the list that are being used now in the real world for things like uh, uh, sort of inspection tasks. There was a robot, um, which, which went on to an oil rig and carried out sort of a week's worth of inspection tasks. There are delivery robots. So really there are all kinds of applications that you could imagine a humanoid robot being used for. I mean, again, this is a robot which is designed to essentially kind of move and look like a, a human to some degree. So if you think about the tasks that we're capable of, there's really kind of no limit to what a robot like this could be could, could be used to work to carry out. It's incredible how far, uh, what, what kind of advancements we've had over this last year just in robotics alone. And you can read about the rest of them uh, in this article at digitaltrends.com. Let's go to something else that really has seemed to advance at just such a breakneck speed as far as compared to even like two years ago. And I'm, I'm talking about artificial intelligence. And, you know, maybe what that even means, what that term means is still maybe a little bit loose as far as where it's being applied. But there are some really attention grabbing things that people did with AI over this last year. And one of them was, was art, something you wouldn't picture artificial intelligence. You think of that as being kind of a human domain, you know, not something that, that AI would be involved in, but yet that's not the case. Something happened this last year. 
Yeah, this was actually one of my favourite uh, artificial intelligence stories of the last year for, for exactly the reason that you mentioned. When we think about tasks that AI is capable of, normally it tends to be kind of mon uh, sort of number crunching sorts of jobs. So we imagine, for example, it might be uh, have, have application, e even, even in something kind of like legal work where it's kind of, you know, processing large amounts of documents or sort of studying rule sets and trying to kind of find patterns and that sort of thing. But creativity, for some reason, it's something that we kind of prize very highly as humans. We think of it as something that machines won't be able to carry out. So uh, a demonstration like this is quite interesting. And for anyone who, who didn't read the story earlier on in the year, this was a painting which had been generated uh, in part by algorithm. Um, it was shown about 15,000 uh, images, sort of the greatest hits of the art world. And then using that knowledge, it generated a new painting, which uh, went up for auction at Christie's auction house. And I think that the original price that they were expecting to um, get for this was about seven thousand to ten thousand dollars which is you know it's still probably more than you or i might get if we if we painted something and then had it auctioned <laughs> off but in 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 the end i think it sold for a four hundred and thirty two thousand dollars so it's kind of this crazy landmark because i mean to a degree it shows that maybe maybe even if we are concerned about the idea of machine uh, creativity or machines kind of carrying out tasks that we might consider creative there is clearly an audience for it so I think in the next year even based purely maybe on sort of financial motives you're going to see more and more people thinking oh actually this is quite interesting we can get machines to generate art and there may well be a, an audience for it so I think it was an interesting story for, for, for a number of different reasons. I mean not to brag I did win a coloring contest once when I was eight so I feel like I could probably get in that price range uh, but <laughs> this is seriously though it is it is really amazing what it was what it did I mean it's still one of those things where it's, it's a little bit disturbing, like how it, how it decided to create or what it decided to create with it. But at the same time, seeing this kind of advancement in it is, it's, it's incredible, you know, and it's something that's going to be, uh, like, you, like you were even explained, like creativity seems to be something we've always thought of as a human side. And now we're seeing what AI can, can be used for with this. Um, let's go on to this last one too, because right? I, I know everybody can go to digitaltrends.com read all about these different advancements. But this last one was one that was really pretty shocking in that I don't think anybody knew how far along we were with this kind of AI. And I'm talking about Google Duplex. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is probably the most famous, I would say. It, maybe you, may, you mentioned earlier the, 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 the uh, sort of viral video of the robot doing parkour. Maybe that was shared as widely, but I think this is probably the break that people are most uh, excited about. And it was uh, Google's um, duplex technology, which basically enables a robot to phone up and place a reservation for a restaurant um, or a hair salon, I think they did in their demonstration. So essentially, it's kind of like getting Siri or Google Now or Alexa to phone up and make a reservation. But it does it in such a realistic voice, complete with sort of uh, the, 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 the human um, I guess ticks, which I'm probably doing now when I'm speaking, that sort of ums and ahs between words that make it sound like we're conversing with a human, um, with the idea that even the person on the other end who's maybe taking this reservation doesn't realize that they're speaking with a machine. And it's really just an astonishing demonstration of, as you say, how far this technology has come in a short in a short space of time. It was shown off at uh, Google's I.O. Uh, conference earlier this year. And I think they're just now starting to, they had a beta um, a couple of uh, months back. And now I think they're just starting to roll it out for um, some Google phones in, I think about three or four US cities. But that's something that we should really be watching in 2019 as this becomes kind of you know, a mainstream technology that's kind of available to all of us. Yeah, I mean, and, and just the, the fact that they got there this quick, we actually have a clip uh, that here, we'll, we'll go ahead and roll just a clip of it. This is a part of the demonstration that they did for Google Duplex. I think this is somebody calling up, to, I believe this is the one where she's calling up to order, uh, well, I will just, let's go ahead and play it here. We'll take a look. It's, but yeah, it's somebody calling an actual uh, person. So the second person is human, the first person is not. And if you don't know that's what you're listening to, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. So let's go ahead and roll this right now. Good happening, Althea. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. 
sure. What time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 115. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? So that's just a little bit of a sample there, but I mean, even adding in the mm-hmm, you know, and different things like that, like actual human, things a human would do, it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, again, you, you, you think back to maybe 2011 when uh, Siri first showed up on our, on our iPhone 4S and how even at the time you kind of had to speak to, to machines in such a deliberate way to get them to understand what you were saying. Yeah. And you know, actually really less than a decade um, on, we can have conversations where the machine learning technology and the voice recognition is so good that it's able to speak with someone who doesn't even realize that they're, they're, they're speaking with a machine. So it is, it, it's really astonishing. So for me, that was probably the most exciting um, AI related uh, development of the year, I think. I think maybe the, the, the robot painting would be my favorite story, but I think that this would probably be the, uh, the development to, to watch, definitely. Well, so many amazing advancements, and you've kind of categorized a bunch of the really big ones right there in your article. So that article is available at digitaltrends.com right now. Highly suggest reading it. Luke, thanks so much for hopping on here to talk with us about this. It's always yeah, fun to bring up with this subject. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, Luke.